Welcome to Breaking the Silence with Dr. Gregory Williams. Dr. Williams is the author of the acclaimed book, Shattered by the Darkness, Putting the Pieces Back Together After Child Abuse. Dr. Williams is on the senior leadership team at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. And Dr. Williams travels the United States speaking and training professionals, parents, and victims about the importance of dealing with abuse and personal trauma head on and not being afraid to break the silence of your own personal pain. Feel free to call in to tonight's show at 888-627-6008 and speak with Dr. Williams and his guests live on air. And now, your host, Dr. Williams. Good evening and welcome to Breaking the Silence and welcome to live from Houston, Texas, the most awesome, look at this, the most awesome, beautiful city in the world and it's just great having you with us tonight and I want to tell you what, never do I get texts about the show during the intro. I'm already getting texts, people saying, I can't wait to hear this. So there must be people that's on tonight that everybody wants to hear. And we do. We have a group of awesome, awesome guests. And this is going to be a wonderful program this evening. I won't do any fluff at the beginning, like give you all my great wisdom that I learned at the, during the week. So we don't need that tonight because you're going to hear it from so many different people. And I'm just excited about it. But I would like to let you know that August 16th, the new book goes on sale in this copy right here, uh, this version. Uh, the Kindle version came out, I believe, July 25th. And believe it or not, it's selling today almost 8,000 copies a day in Kindle. A day. I can't believe it. So we're, we're over 80,000 copies as of just a while ago because I keep hitting refresh and wondering how, how it's going. But it's going just awesome. But the, uh, the hard copy... Uh, is going going to be on sale August 16th. And this is the book that I wish I had when I was going through all my troubles, all my abuse, all of my hurt and pain. And let me be honest with you, the books that I, I sell aren't selling so well because they're so greatly written and so much wisdom. It's because a message of hope is needed and people are looking for resources to be able to help somebody out how to get through the next day, how to get through the hour that they're in. And tonight we have four people that uh, I am proud to introduce to you and to the world of, of what they have, what's happened to them. Matter of fact, we had Anthony on not too long ago. He had a full hour. Uh, so we know all about Anthony. But I want to let you know, just as we go into this, that no matter who's watching, listening, no matter what's happened to you in the past, I want to let you know your past does not determine who you are. Your past prepares you for who you're going to be. And I don't know about you. I'm ready to have church. That right there gets me excited because the past does not define me. The past prepares me for what I'm going to be in the future. And when you grab a hold of that, when you can embrace that, when you can finally bring it to the surface and use it in the world today, it will start changing your life and everybody's life around you. And it will be impactful. And that's exactly what we're talking about tonight. I want to introduce to you tonight, if I could, I think I'm going to do uh, the boss first. Cindy Stafford is the founder and the president of ACES Matter. And uh, she is the head of this wonderful organization that is going to be introducing to you this evening some of the residents in the 2003 first class of the Residency Reacher Program of ACES Matter. So Cindy, all the way from the beautiful state of Florida, although she used to live in Texas and she got silly and went to Florida. But anyway, she's a Texas... She's a Texan anyway. Cindy Stafford, come on in. How are you, dear? I'm great, Greg. What a beautiful introduction. I'm so excited. I don't want to be on the mic too long because the attention is going to be all on these reachers. Yeah. 
Reachers, reachers. So thanks for having us. And you said, you said something along the lines that made me think about we don't look like what we've been through. Well, thank goodness for that. And as I heard you talk about, um, you know, your book, and obviously I know a little bit about what's in your book, it reminded me of the work that we're doing is we're, we're doing this for our future selves, right? Like our past selves had already come and gone and things happened to us. And uh, we realized that we get to have this platform, not just for our future self, but for like future generations. So all the moves we make in Greg are designed to find our higher self. Yeah. That's our self. Yeah. So thank you for having us. You know, I, I don't think, and without getting, you know, ultra religious here, I, I really believe that God doesn't waste a pain. Do you agree with that? Oh, do I? As, well, I up until two years ago, I didn't like I just what am I doing? Like I, I thought God was mad at me for a long time. Right. I thought God was just like he forgot about me. And it was two years ago. I like to tell people I got struck by lightning and it was a reminder for me that I was not forgotten about that. I was being called upon to do something with my childhood traumas. I was called yeah. upon to do something with my dysfunction. And then the most beautiful thing that came out of it was I didn't have to do it by myself. And so that's what birthed this idea of the residency because I was like, there's a lot of people out here talking about their stories. What if we all did it together? What if we all, what if we all brought our traumas together? After all, <laughs> there's industries that use our trauma and they sell them back to us. What if we used our traumas for good? Beyond, it would change the world. You know, I was at a conference up in a college station, Bryan area with a whole bunch of educators yesterday. And uh, it was just a jam packed room. And I asked automatically, how many people have never heard of ACEs? And hands went up. And I'm like, how can that be? But we assume because we work with it and read about it and, and write about it and talk about it, constantly almost every day of our lives that everybody knows that's what the importance of the reacher program is because they're going to be going out into their communities into their zip codes and telling other people about aces why because aces matter aces yeah. are life-changing i'll tell you what uh cindy because we can talk the whole hour uh we'll, we'll do this some other time bring in uh the ladies, if you would, introduce them, and we'll bring them on the screen, and then I'll introduce the men. How about that? Awesome. Ladies, go first. So my first two features, yeah. and I want to make sure for the people that are watching this, we, what happens when you learn about ACE is your creativity comes back, right? Your creativity comes back, and you realize that things that happened to you had nothing to do with you because you were a child, right? So um, I want to introduce Chanel Arterbridge and then Renisha Johnson. And here's before I, before I bring them to the table. A REACHER stands for, it's a noun and it's an acronym. It stands for a person who is willing to reach back out to others and help them realize that their emotions and challenges that they faced encourage resilience. So every single REACHER that is in this academy are here to bring the ACEs study to life through their own personal stories. Chanel Arterbridge is joining us all the way from the East Coast. And she's going to come and she's going to share how she came to know about ACEs and how it has actually impacted her life personally and professionally. As a mother of two boys and a wife with her own set of ACEs, she's going to share why this cause is important to her to spread awareness and to do it rapidly. Renisha Johnson is joining us from Louisiana. Renisha Johnson has her own story, and I think many people will be able to relate to Renisha because Renisha happened to be one of the children who had to go through the foster system. And as a foster system experience in childhood, we know in itself that without the right structures and support, ACEs will continue to accumulate. And I think um, all of us have been, I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but many of us have been in situations where the system has let us down. And so Renisha is gonna be able to come to this conversation on ACEs from that vantage point. And if you know, like I know, many children are in foster care right now, right? Yeah. So she brings that lens to the story and she's bringing it to us all the way from the state of Louisiana. So let's welcome Renisha Johnson and Chanel Arterbridge. You guys come on in.
Okay, here they are. Look at these beautiful folks. Absolutely (laughs) awesome. Thank you. And Cindy, welcome to the program tonight. Thank you for sharing with us. And I tell you what, you did such a wonderful job, Cindy. Go ahead and introduce the men too. We'll bring everybody in. Let me me do it. Because you know more about all these folks because you have, uh, even though I was on the interviews and uh, kind of went through all the paperwork with you since I'm on the board with Aces Matter. Uh, Go ahead. And of course, everybody knows Anthony because he is the king of writing books. (laughs) <laughs> he is. Anthony's the king. Well, go ahead, Cindy. Let me do this. I don't think Chanel, I didn't say where Chanel was chiming in from. And Chanel is coming to us from New Jersey. So what New I Jersey. want to hear, what I want people to hear as all of the reachers get a chance to share their platform is that we're spread out geographically, right? And I met all of these people within the last year. So this is kind of my COVID project, if you will. And what um when God answered my question about revealing myself to me through my own adversities, he presented me in the form of Renisha and Chanel. So New Jersey's in the house. Yes. In the house. Now next, Thank you. next, without further ado, let's bring the men to the table. And here's what I'd like to say about the two men, uh, some praise to Anthony McCauley. Anthony McCauley is going to be representing North Carolina. When I reached for Anthony, I saw Anthony out there using his platform online, trying to bring awareness to drug and alcohol abuse, trying to mentor kids using his own personal story of overcoming addiction. And I'm not gonna steal too much of his story, but Anthony has a story that screams like, if I had the connection or if I could have made the connection earlier on, some of these things that I started to do in adulthood, would not have impacted me as much. So Anthony's gonna come from a standpoint of, my ace has led me here, but now I'm here. So I wanna welcome Anthony McCauley from North Carolina, uh, one of our male reachers who's going to bring a different voice uh, to this cause and make it okay for others to talk about any addictions, not just drug addictions that they struggle with, because I think Anthony is a walking, talking testimony of what God will do when we ask him to reveal ourselves to us. I'm going to lastly introduce Clarence, Clarence Bumpus. I, it's really weird how Clarence and I met. We met through a mutual friend of mine. So again, connections just happen in weird ways. But my personal trainer when I was in my 20s in Texas told me about Clarence. And he said, when you meet Clarence, you, 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 you're not going to want to go back. Clarence has a story. And not only does Clarence's story match his personality, he's going to bring something to the table that young men all around the world are going to look up to and want to say, I, I see my healing in Clarence, right? So Clarence not only represents um, our men, our Black men, but he also represents the audience of being behind the desk of mental wellness as a clinic, as a clinician. So we know um, that we don't, ha- at least for my culture, we don't have a lot of men of color that are taking the torch and going into mental health counseling. And for Clarence to not only use his personal experiences, but one, his professional career to mimic his goals. Clarence is joining us from Colorado. Mountain time. Got to get that awesome. right. Mountain time. Come on. How did I do? I don't know. If I, did I do y'all justice? Because y'all yeah, you so did great. Few words and look at I this did. group of people. Look at this. Is this not awesome? Okay. Now, Cindy and I are going to just kind of take a breath and lean back. Okay. I, I want people to understand that these are only four of possibly the 16 to 20, maybe, that we, residents that we're going to end up having, having that's beginning this program. And I want to let you know, as you listen to these stories and the impact of what this program is hoping to do for each of them, listeners tonight can participate in this from your own home helping us reach more and we'll let you know more about that a little bit later on in the program but ladies let's start off with you and and guys jump in anytime at all but Clarence and Anthony you may have to fight for your time tonight I just want to know because these ladies are ready to burst okay (laughs) but uh, we we have another four on in a couple weeks so we have we're going to try to get everybody on before the the uh the next couple months are out of the way. But uh, Chanel and Ronisha, what are you hoping to learn from this Reacher Residency Program that ACES Matter is presenting to you and they've accepted you into? What are you hoping to get out of this? Well, for me, I'm hoping to get out of it, they'd be able to spread 
the uh, rapidly spread awareness about ACEs. And for those who may not know, ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences, uh, those who may be listening. So I just wanted to make sure that we throw an acronym a lot around that, that that is what it stands for, Adverse Childhood Experiences. And so I'm hoping to gain being a reacher is to also uh, be able to make sure pediatricians uh, hopping on the goal of Dr. Nadine Burke-Harris uh, to make sure that they are able to screen for ACEs. Uh, by 2028. And so I think by uh, join, being a reacher for ACEs Matter, that's going to help me to reach that goal and a lot of us. That's fantastic. I think Dr. Nadine didn't find out, the, or she did find out the politics isn't the best avenue uh, to get the message out. It right. becomes political. And I, I, I kind of like that she is doing something different now because uh, she can really make an impact on people, even though that was an unbelievable role that she was in for a short time. Renisha, what about you, dear? Definitely think that ACEs matter. I know that ACEs matter because I'm still here today to talk to you guys after overcoming so many different things in my life. And I, what I want from this program and from this residency is to simply to empower anybody else and everybody else to say, hey, the things that I'm going through, they're not abnormal. They're not weird. It doesn't make me a bad person because I've gone through these things in my life, right? I want to be able to build those connections. So what I really hope comes from the Reacher program is that we're going out there and we're building connections, right? And we're helping people to make sense of the things in their lives so that they are able to take action, right? So that they can get the support that they need. So I really just want opportunities to share and empower everybody because that's what somebody has done to me. That's what Cindy has been doing in us, you know, giving us opportunities to make sense of the things in our lives that we really couldn't seem to make sense of. And I just want to be a part of that for the next generation or even my own generation. Fantastic. Clarence, what about you? Unmute yourself and, and join the party here. Uh, we want to hear your voice. All right. So I got a pretty bad connection. You're okay. uh, so that might be a thing. Um, honestly, just like these ladies, um, I see this as an opportunity to actually normalize this communication, right? And make mental health just a part of healthcare period and stop trying to like basically do some of the destigmatization work around the barriers that are preventing some of our kiddos, right? And some of our adults from actually leading up to their potential, right? Like living up to their potential and leading fulfilling lives it is almost like few and far between because most of us are unaware and we've normalized some of that abnormal stuff so hard that it's become a part of our life that's hindered our growth. And so, right, we can't change or fix a problem that we haven't acknowledged exists. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping that this Reacher program is going to do. Wow. Wow. Anthony, oh, I can tell you're ready to burst. <laughs> I am. Uh, thank you so much again, Dr. G. Good to see you. Uh, I'm hoping with ACEs, I know that it's, I've already been doing some of it already, but I want to yes. make sure that um, people get to the point where they're being encouraged to learn and open up about themselves and be more transparent when it comes to addictive behaviors. Because I'm finding out that that um, they want to be heard about their concerns and their struggles with it, but also that thing has a hold of it. And, and the ladies and, and Clarence, y'all haven't heard some, some of the things about me or whatever, but uh, my story is a, a story of dealing with some addictive behaviors with a particular drug of choice uh, back in the late 80s when crack cocaine hit. So now I'm dealing with opiates and dealing on the front lines, Dr. G, every day of people dealing with fentanyl, heroin and methamphetamines are really, really running rampant in my area right now. So but I'm talking to those people. We're hoping with this ACEs and this residency training, what's going to allow them to do is to be heard and understood. Because I talk to them one on one in an office setting, I'm finding out that they're, they're sharing their concerns and their struggles with me. And it's stemming from something that happened to them in their childhood. So I'm right where I need to be, Dr. G. I'm right where that's, I need to be. So that's fantastic. I tell you, th this is going to be tough because we have so much I want to get to all of you on, but to try to get this in in an hour so everybody has a fair shot. We're going to take our first commercial break. On the other side of this commercial break, Chanel. And Ronisha, I want to make sure you have an opportunity to nutshell your story and try to, as, as quickly as you can in a, in a couple minutes, just kind of briefly skim over it and then tell us what was probably one of the most uh, impactful 
moments that changed your life to get you to where you are today. So we're going to ask each of you, all four of that, but we'll start off with the two ladies after this first commercial break. So hang with us. You may want to, oh, my lands, my phone is going crazy. And it's all from New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> Chanel, this is your family <laughs> doing this to me. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Well, you come back right after this first commercial break, and we're going to hear from Chanel and Ronisha and what their life story was all about in a quick nutshell. We'll be right back. Hang with us. You know, I tell you what, I have been working on this project for the last couple of years and we keep promising you that this book was going to come out, but it is now out right now on Kindle edition. And I can't be more excited than I am about this book because it's a perfect timing for what our teenagers, 20 year olds, 30 year olds, basically everybody needs. And it's called When the Dark Clouds Come, The Roadmap to Hope. It's available right now on Amazon on Kindle and it'll be available August 16th, uh, actually on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, uh, Books A Million, and all those sites, and just a few topics that it talks about. Chapter one, you're gonna find out how, where you are in life and how to find out the, how to get where you're going. Chapter eight tells you about how to take control back of your life. Chapter 11, too, deals with how you're dealing with anxiety and anger. Chapter 12 goes even deeper into depression. How do you deal with that? Hurt, pain, and suicide. And there's just so many things. I personally believe that every person that's listening to me, every parent, every grandparent, every school teacher, every doctor, every library, every church, every counselor, every minister needs a copy of this book and copies to hand out to the people that are going through some of their own storms of their life. When the dark clouds come, the roadmap to hope. Get this one. I'm proud of this. And this is the one book that I wish I had when I was going through all of that abuse, when I was a child, when I was a teenager. I wish I had that to be able to turn, to be able to learn how to get through my storms to hope. Roadmap to hope when the dark clouds come. Don't miss it. It's on Amazon right now. There she is again. Um, great to have you all with us. We have four of the residency reacher program that the 2023 uh, initial uh, year, the first year that we've done this uh, with Aces Matter, and they are here uh, this evening sharing with us. And Chanel and Ronisha, uh, Chanel, let's go ahead and start with you. Tell me, uh, is without you know, I don't, I don't want to be rude in this, but because we have four people, but nutshell. Just quickly, what got you to understand that ACE has affected you in your life? I'm going to start at Target. It's a place I love to shop, and I know it sounds ironic I'm going to start there, but I was in Target with my son at the time, who was about two years old. I had two boys. At the time, I only had one, and I, my son was admired. I mean, like all little babies are. And at that time, um, unfortunately, Trayvon Martin was actually, his whole uh, murder was in the media as well. and. I just had an epiphany in that store while I was being complimented, my son was being complimented and adored that in about 10 years time or so, he may not be. 
And so I started to actually have this anxiety build up in me as a Black mother of how I am going to now have to foster still the uh, resilience in him to overcome things that he'll have to endure because the world will receive him differently. And so that's when it started for me practicing affirmations. A lot of my, I didn't know at the time what I was doing, but my faith in God actually led me to do that. So daily doing affirmations, really preparing their mindset and so on. And then I just stumbled upon ACE through uh, The Deepest Well, written by Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. And from there, she put a name to what I was actually trying to protect my son from. And that was ACEs or adverse childhood experiences. And I learned that not only was there racism or discrimination, but there were other um, adversities that I need to prep and help them cope with and overcome. And really delved into the science behind it and how it impacts the brain and makes toxic stress. And wanted to go ahead and create a platform for that and share what I've known with other parents. And that's where I stumbled and I, I created a Positive Kids. And, and now with Cindy, I hope to also combine that and be a reacher and spreading that, that message. And it's a message that's so important because I think we're seeing the wonderful thing I love about everybody that's in this first initial class is it's not all from one area of the country. It's going to be all over the country. We see that tonight. We have North Carolina and New Jersey and Louisiana and Colorado and Florida and Texas. Uh, just with the six people that's on, because it happens everywhere. And that initial ACEs study, uh, Ronisha and Chanel, Anthony and uh, Clarence, um, didn't even talk about racism, didn't even talk about growing up in an underdeveloped uh, community or lower income class community, didn't even talk about bullying. So that's an old study that probably needs to be revised but with the knowledge that we have and just with those initial 10 questions, it can literally be still life changing, even though I got a feeling they're probably going to be changing that sometime soon, because we haven't even skimmed the surface of what the impact of what our children are going through today. And you realize that Chanel with your baby in a cart at Target. And while he was about 18 months old and being adored, but there's something that there's a cusp that happens as a black parent that you have to prepare your children for. And I think that perspective is not shared with a lot of people that as a parent of a black child, you have to prepare them for that and cope with the adversity that is to come. You're not going to be able to avoid it. So there wow. will be ACEs that it will be there. So that is where, and when you talked about the expanded ACEs, which you talked about the bullying, discrimination, um, and, and so on, uh, foster care, a uh, child, a mm. uh, parent that may have passed away. Yes, there are things that happen that we can't avoid. And so you definitely have to prepare the mindset of that child so they can reach their highest potential by fostering that, that resilience. And eight, you know, ACEs matter, matter is going to help me do that. Wow. Okay, let me, I'm a, I need a plug in there because Chanel, I think the audience should also hear what Chanel is sending to me. The words that I'm hearing, Chanel, is that even you as a parent of the 18 month old child at that time, I like to remind people that when we hear the word at risk, we typically associate that with kids who are in poverty or in underprivileged neighborhoods. But the truth is, the real truth is, is that any child is at risk if their parent doesn't do what Chanel just did. Because without a parent coming to the awareness that there are things that I could be doing to pr prepare my child, right, for the ACEs that may be imparted on them that I have nothing to do with as their parent, but any child that does not have a parent that is um, in a space where they can receive new knowledge is putting their child at risk of these toxic experiences that unfortunately influence how we move about life in adulthood. So I wanted to add that and say, Chanel, thank you for being yes. that parent that, that saw in the moment, even without your knowledge of ACEs, what needed to happen from your, from your vantage point and for your children. Thank you. Yes. Ronisha? That set me on fire. <laughs> yeah, I bet it did. Ronisha. Absolutely. Share. You know, Cindy shared earlier that I am a product of the foster care system here in America. Um, the world is so small. I'm from Colorado where Clarence is and I've got family in North Carolina. So everything seems to kind of connect together. And so I grew up, right, just kind of collecting aces like they were charms, right? Uh -huh. I was 
you know, going through foster care. I was born to a mother, you know, who struggled with, you know, I was born in the late eighties, Anthony, right? So you talked about that. I'm a, I'm a product. I'm one of those so, so-called crack babies, like they called them. Right. And so I was just collecting these aces as I grew up and different things happening to me, even in the foster care system, continually to be victimized, you know, things like that were going on. I don't know. I was just going through life thinking that all this bad stuff was happening to me. And it didn't really smash into my face, actually, until I went to college, right? And that, that makes me think of how many students were sending off to college with a backpack full of aces, right? And they don't even know what they're carrying and the, the professors don't know what they're bringing to them. I was lucky, right? I went to Southern University and HBCU where people really cared about me, right? And my professors noticed that I wasn't myself. And it wasn't until I came over to the social work department and talked to social workers who tried to tell me a little bit about aces and make sense of some of the things that I had gone through. And for me, being a reacher is, you know, kind of giving back. It's what I'm supposed to do. It make, helps me make sense of my ACEs. It helps me to say the things that I've gone through were not in vain, right? I'm, I have went through those things so only that I can reach back to someone else to teach back to someone else. And so when I started learning about ACEs and I was able to put a name to these things that I had gone through, right? I was able to label these experiences and make them, um, not an individual problem, which I think what happens sometimes we tend to individualize ACEs as if it's our fault, if it's, it's something inherent within us and not really looking at, at a community or a society kind of problem, which you tend to think of these things. And I think that's just what I'm here to do is really make a kid more, so to speak. I'm always in touch. I love children. I don't have any of my own Chanel. And so I can really empathize about how much you have to stay on alert when you're working with your kids to make them not have to um, endure ACEs if they don't have to, or at least be prepared for the ones that we can't fight them against, um, fight against for them. And so I really just want to be not a voice for the voiceless, because I hate when people say that, but I want to be able to say, hey, here's the mic, right? Now that you can understand a little bit about what's going on with you, you step up and you share your story because it's going to, it's that connection that Cindy talks about so much, that connection is cure. And I really think that sharing and building communities to say, hey, you're not alone in this. You're not the only one. That's what we're here to do. And so I'm hoping that we can just reach one, right? We know how trauma is complex. We know that it impacts you well beyond your childhood. So things that people think that they got over or things that they didn't even realize that they were carrying with them, I really want to bring awareness to that so that you can start to do something about it and chip away at those things. Are you hearing the wisdom of these folks tonight? Good night. Here, uh, you're in the residency program to, to, to learn more and to get more information. But wow, I'm learning from you all. And that's what I love about this is because of exactly that, Ronisha, when we decide to join and help one other person in that moment in time, and I look at each day that way, just reaching out and grabbing somebody else's hand and go, hey, I may not be with you through the rest of the day, but I'm with you right now. What can I learn from you? What can you learn from me? How can I help you? How can you help me? How can we support each other? And then maybe say bye and never see each other again. But we take that moment. Sometimes we live in such a tunnel vision. We don't care and we want to ignore and, and cave in to ourselves. And we have to use these experiences to help other people. And uh, Clarence, if you can come on and uh, unmute and let me see you in. And uh, thank you, ladies. Uh, go ahead. You got a thought, Cindy, while Clarence is coming up? Because I think this is a perfect segue into Clarence. And I want to just say one thing after Ranisha. And this one, just Clarence, be ready, brother, because you're next. Just be ready. <laughs> so when Clarence was getting on, I don't know if y'all caught that, he, he announced that he had a bad connection. Did y'all catch that at the beginning? And mm -hmm. for those of us that know how Zoom works, if you get a bad connection with Zoom, people can't really hear you. You start to freeze up and life goes on. The call goes on even when you freeze. What Ronisha just explained to us, what you did with the words that just landed over here in Orlando, Ronisha, is that sometimes some of these systemic things allow us to be born into poor connections, if you will. Yeah. So as you mentioned that your mom was born in the 80s and if she happened to be a part of that era where crack came through and swept uh, all of the people we love, my own people that we love, that forced children to be connected to something that wasn't very strong. Life went on. She continued to collect aces. And now through the Reacher Academy, her connection is going to be stronger. 
because she's going to be able to give that back. And even though life is going to go on, Clarence, I think you made a good point. I don't even know if you meant to, but having a bad connection means a kid might have a rocky start that might pass over into their adulthood. And until we come together to help that kid get back online, that adult in that kid's body, there's no there's no reconnecting without the connection being the cure. So I'm going to say that, mm. Misha, for sharing your story. I think you're going to inspire a whole bunch of people in this work. Absolutely. I know Michael's or Anthony's getting ready to uh, preach, but we're going to have to put him. Uh, hang on, Anthony. You're next after Clarence. Go ahead, Clarence. I'm like, look, we can let Ant go. <laughs> like, oh, no, no. We'll never get that out of the right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just to follow suit. So, um, crib, first of all, shout out to the Coloradans. Um, but the situation was like, I've, I've been in every other population that you can grab an ace. Like my sister, Renisha was talking about collecting them, right. Um, from the single parent household all the way to matriculating through one of the, lower income based um, school districts to a division one program that was a PWI, unfortunately, um, and then getting into a lot of stuff where um, a lot of my background started to catch up on me and the expression product of environment started to become reality, if you will. Um, and so pretty much my entire goal here is to reach each and one of these student athletes, right, that are struggling with co-occurring disorders in the making. Um, and all of these ACE babies, right, who are literally struggling through life and dealing with impaired functionality left and right, all because they have an unchecked disorder or illness that stemmed from some maladaptive experience in their childhood that they probably had already, again, like I said earlier, accepted as a norm. Right. And so that's kind of what everybody here is doing. And, and I've had to do a lot of reconditioning and it didn't really hit me until I lost my first child to uh, abuse and neglect from his mother and her partner. And so, like, at the same time, I'm still trying to maintain my or my athletic scholarship um, and still trying to declare for the draft and do all these different things while just incompletely working through life not truly knowing self, not truly understanding what I was going through, just fogged up. As you spoke to those narrow lenses, right? That blinder system, that's where a lot of us are living. And it's not until we are informed, again, in the writings on the wall, that there is some kind of problem, but it's not the end all be all, right? It doesn't dictate your character. It doesn't define just where you can go or your limitations. It's just something that has happened that you can own or let it own you. And until we normalize that kind of conversation, right? What are we doing? Right. And the same way we perpetuate and we hand off the trauma, we can do the same thing with healing. And that's kind of my entire vocation here. With that's all I got. OK, fantastic. Thank you, Clarence. OK, Anthony, go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Wow, Clarence, Ronisha and Chanel, you guys are awesome. But uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've begun to um, working in the field now and, and recognizing that um, me coming from my background, and I said it earlier in our, in our briefing that I have to prove that it's worthwhile for me to speak out, okay, about the fact that here I am, student athlete, like Clarence was saying, a standout athlete, grew up in a great family, uh, father was a disciplinarian, the, the oldest of three children, and after having some injuries in my senior year in school, no college ever wanted to see me again or even talk to me again. So I had to go into the blue collar field of working and doing some things, but I got a hold of something that really, really made me feel good. Sin, it was so beautiful, painted up beautiful. The sin of it was fun, okay? This little substance that I was beginning to distribute around the community and making money, calling myself a drug dealer until Dr. G, I sat too freaking long in a spot and I got high on my own supply. After that, it began to unleash and unhash the things in my brain that took me back to early childhood that I recognized I had some resentments that I was holding on to. So I had to, right now, my goal right now is to make, and I deal with kids as well, but now I'm also an adult population dealing front line of, of being a certified peer support and a certified recovery coach of helping others who are dealing with addictive behaviors. The more and more I talk to them, the more and more it makes me feel like I have to avoid making them feel wrong about things. 
and and people are going, oh, why come you can't just stop? Oh, that's just sense for you to be. Well, I understand. So I want people to if if uh, be a safe place right now to learn about Aces, where you can share your concerns and give your feedback, and we can avoid smacking people down and make it about their responses and begin to say, say, you know what? It's not your fault. Then we can begin to let them embrace a culture of seeking some feedback from us as residency, uh, going through this residency training program. So uh, Dr. Dr. G and to my, my fellow, everybody else on here, I just want to ensure right now that as we're working on uh, our residency program that we're ensuring psychological safety wow and so that is so I'm good is this we drop the mic? <laughs> yeah, microphone drop there you go fantastic okay we're okay, gonna take a last break the one, thing, go ahead, Cindy. Go break. Ahead. one thing i want to say i'm going to bunch clarence and anthony together when i say the first and often most difficult step step in this is just talking about it Words carry a lot of weight. It was words that hurt us in the in our childhood. Um, words were the first thing that told us who we were about ourselves. And so to be able to share y'all's words in a way that you're doing it now with whoever's going to watch, people that you've never even met in this $8 billion, I mean, 8 billion people society, that's the first step to the cure. And then in terms of what Clarence and um, Anthony said about the things that they struggle with, uh, Clarence, you said it was something like it just felt cloudy when you lost your children, you know, when you lost your first child. And then Anthony, that drug. Gabor Matisse says childhood trauma is the gateway drug to all of those things that we experience. Wow. Wow. Childhood trauma is the gateway drug. Childhood trauma is what causes us to go towards these behaviors and things to get our minds off of what happened in our childhood. And we may not even be aware that we're doing it. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Greg. Wow, Cindy, that's good stuff. Okay, we're going to take our last break. And, and on the other side of this, Ronisha, I want you to be ready to go all right out. When we come back from the break, we're going to shoot out this question. And I'm going to be asking you, what is the one thing that you have learned? Um uh, that's changed your life when discovering what ACEs are and how it affected you. And what's the one thing you want to make sure other people hear when you get out there and do your own presentations like you're all going to be doing uh, soon uh, in front of crowds. And I think a lot of people are going to be in front of hundreds and thousands of people. And I really think one day soon we'll all be at a conference where there's going to be an auditorium filled with people and we're just going to go one after each other and we'll just high five and the next one to come on. So what have you learned that has been life changing about ACEs and what you want to teach? What one lesson you want to make sure other people learn from you when you make your presentation? And we're going to find out those answers to that question on the other side of this last commercial break. Don't leave us. The last segment's going to be awesome. Be right back. HCI Publishing, that brought you the international bestsellers, A Child Called It, and the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, comes the latest book by Dr. Gregory Williams, Shattered by the Darkness. This book describes the horrific abuse that Dr. Williams suffered at the hands of his father for over 12 years, and the damaging effect of keeping everything silent about that abuse for 30 years. If you're looking for that book that you can't put down, then pick up a copy of Shattered by the Darkness by Dr. Gregory Williams at all Barnes & Noble stores, Amazon, and Books A Million. Now, back to Breaking the Silence with Dr. Gregory Williams. Welcome back to Breaking the Silence. You can see behind me, the sun has gone down. It's just a beautiful evening here in Houston, Texas. And I'll tell you what, uh, and by a show of hands, who, who all has books? I know Anthony has dozens of them, but who, who all has books? Cindy has a book. Uh, do you have a book, Chanel? Okay. Yes, so, I do. Right, should have. Uh, Clarence, do you have a book or Renisha? No. 
Okay. I mean, I have your book. I don't have my own book. My bad. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you all you all need to do books because the, the wisdom that you have obtained, the world needs to have this in their hand. Uh, so next time uh, we get together, I want to do the commercial for your books instead of the same commercial for mine week after week, because I know your books are going to be even better. Ronisha, in my own personal life, the one thing that I always say every time I present, like I did yesterday up in College Station and Bryan with all the educators, I always say before I die, and if I die and I never come back and never see me again, the one thing I want you to know is I want you to put your phone down and look at people in the eye and go, how are you? That's the one thing I want people to understand that we need to look at people in the eye and say, how are you doing today? And then wait for their response and be able to see their heart. What's that, that, that's my message to everybody. Make a difference. Ronisha, what have you learned and what do you want people to know? I think the biggest thing that I've learned as I'm educating myself about trauma and ACEs and all of those things is, you know, when you initially think about it, you know that these experiences impact your emotional wellness, right? Um, But, and even your mental wellness, but sometimes you don't think about the actual biology that is impacted by trauma, right? And that's the one thing that I've learned just from educating myself. And I think a life-changing book that anybody who wants to work in trauma, the boy who was, you know, raised as a dog by Dr. Oh, yeah. Scary, life-changing book, right? Because it really educated me on the biology. And, you know, you know that developmental neurobiology really undermines and underlines children's reactions to trauma. And so if I can really get the science right, I think sometimes that makes a big difference. And what I've, that's what I've learned about ACEs that is that it affects your brain and your actual brain makeup. But what I want people to learn is that you can repair those, right? You can repair those neurons. You can like nurture those neurons, right? You can go back and you can give yourself what, or you can get from other people what you missed in childhood, those pieces that you needed, like somebody to encourage you and support you and simply hold you, reaffirm you, let you know that you are loved, that you're important. Anthony talked about psychological safety. You know, I work in child welfare. We talk about felt safety all of the time, right? And how so many children don't feel safe. And we know that danger and safety are integral parts of children who have been traumatized. So I think if anything, what I've learned is the biology that plays into trauma. But what I want people to learn from me is that you can go back and you can repair those neurons. You can do the work. And it takes, you know, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of community. It takes a lot of knowledge and awareness that needs to happen, right, before you can even start to repair those little pieces, but it is possible because I know it because I've, I've been working, right? I've been doing the work on myself. I've been surrounding myself with community and support and active um, things like therapy, right, to go in and heal those pieces of me that I thought were broken forever, but they're not, and they really are having. You have an opportunity to kind of heal yourself if you can simply educate yourself a little bit. Wow. That's powerful because the neurons do come back. The plasticity of the brain is unbelievable. The power that God has to put inside of our own uh, chemicals and DNA and everything to be able to repair uh, some of that stuff. So that basically means there's still hope for me (laughs) and there's still hope for everybody else is listening uh, because there is healing that can happen. And uh, education is a key to that. Uh, So thank you so much for Nisha. Uh, Chanel. Sure. Yes, I did want to. I want to echo what Renisha said about the science, because that is what uh, actually um, makes you feel better when you learn about ACEs. Is that the science behind it? It kind of empowers you because it gives you direction and guidance on how to heal. And um, the science let me know with all the studies, seventeen thousand participants, and this is the link that was found. That this is the conclusion. Well, okay. And since I know that can happen, what is the framework that I can do to re- be resilient, recoil the brain damage, and sleep? Just a holistic approach: the sleep, the nutrition, the mindfulness, the mental health care, um, exercise. It has let me. Uh, that's the most important thing I've learned of how to heal. There's a there's a guide of how to do that. Okay, with those seven holistic approaches, I think, and and we attack that and share that. We can definitely break a lot of generational traumas. Well, that's the key, isn't it, to break the cycle? Yes, it is. Fantastic, Anthony. We're gonna let you go next, my friend. Oh man, one of the things um, that I that I had to get past was the fact that. Even after two overdoses, I had to recognize that um, I had to work to create some trust. 
because I, I knew I knew that I had some concerns and some struggles, and and I just didn't know how to voice. But but learning this right here, I found out that trust is the foundation. As I just as I, God has given me a gift to make sure that I'm in a place where people can feel uh, when they see me, and it happens all the time that I'm a place of trust for them. But trust is the foundation uh, to building relationships with people around the world for me. And it's also the heart of building some better, better relationships so I can open up more to people because on the streets, there is no love, there's no trust. And I said, you know, your, your, your best friend will turn state on you. Trust and believe that, you know? So, but I found out that developing trust for me was the answer and, and letting my guard down. And it happened in Florida in a therapist's office. I began to, I looked in a mirror, I had a mirror experienced and I learned how to develop trust in my life. And uh, uh, that's what I want. And that's what I learned. And that's what I want to continue to display that when I'm talking around the world, I want people to know that uh, you can trust what I'm saying, because not only have I been on the front line, but but I've worked to create this trust that I'm displaying back to the world, especially when it comes to dealing with adverse childhood experiences. And we we still hadn't touched the surface of all of our stories, but we we get we give it enough for everybody to say, hey, this is very very interesting. Yeah. And it's it's not nothing nothing we're talking about is myths. All of these are facts. Yeah, and this is so good because honestly, we could get a, an RV right now and everybody hop in and we could travel the country. And the knowledge that's oh, in with this group right here, <laughs> we can do some conferences immediately because the wisdom is there, is here. You all know what you're talking about. And this is great. And trust is huge, uh, Anthony, uh, because on the street, everything's conditional. At that's the right. office, it's conditional love. It's conditional relationship. If you do this, I'll feel this way about you. Yes. But unconditional acceptance and love uh, is huge. And it's often not found too much today. We need, we need more of that. Thank you. Clarence, share with me, my friend. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we talked a lot about the restoration of hope, right? And oh. that's kind of what this whole piece is, right? The restoration of hope. We are truly being hope dealers and being vulnerable, right? That's what we're trying to get back to. Hope the dealers. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that's a tweet moment right there. I got to write that down. I'm, I am now a hope dealer. And look, I am hope, writing that down, hope, baby. Look, the hope, I've already got it. That's helping other people engage. That's the acronym. Okay. Yes. Look at that. That's I love that, Claire. It's fantastic. Keep on going. Keep preaching. That's the connection, though, and that's the cure, right? <laughs> Normalizing the vulnerability that created those very A scores that we're talking about. Right. Because at the end of the day, a lot of those things happen to us outside of our control. But like m many of my brothers and sisters here are echoing tonight. Right. Like there is something that can be done. And neuroplasticity exists because, again, we are all resilient beings and it just takes right a little bit of exposure to the problem. We got to call it what it is and stop being so guarded. Right. And restricted around the things that are actually helpful. Right. And stop trying to misdirect and buffer things for the greater good of other people instead of understanding where you're coming from with that and operating with true conviction. Right. And holding space for other people so they can truly be seen in their own efforts and might. So that's kind of, you know, where we're at. I don't really know what else to say after that, but it's been a blessing. Right. And I think as a mental health professional who is coming from the other side and now sitting in the chair, right? And asking some of these questions, I see a lot of the same patterns, right? These are unchecked boxes, right? Until we get to a point where someone has put check boxes on them. And then we get to navigate those things together and process together, right? And those safe spaces, right? So everybody gets to tell their side of the story and be a hundred percent, right? And not judged and, and not be so ashamed or vulnerable, or ashamed to be vulnerable with the piece of being broken, right? Because we're all broken. We're all broken at some extent, but that doesn't mean, right, we are permanently damaged and unworthy of things. So that's just where that's at. Fantastic. Well, they're telling me we only have two or three minutes, but I will tell you what, real quickly, Clarence, we're going to start with you and then work our way back uh, to the women. So Clarence, Anthony, Ronisha, and we'll end with Chanel, um, and then Cindy. Um, what is your goal 
personal goal, real quick, of this reacher program? What's your goal, Clarence? Uh, deal that hope, man. Normalize hope. being being not okay, right? Telling okay. the truth, talking about it. Fantastic, Anthony. To share my experience, strength, and hope to those around the world of overcoming addictive behaviors. Awesome, Ronisha. All right, I want to educate and I want to encourage people to, once you've got that knowledge, do something with it. Get that active support that you need. Go to counseling, get some support groups, get a community around you, go to therapy, whatever it takes to heal yourself and feel better. That's what I want you to do from this. Wow. Yeah. And Chanel, New Jersey would rile up and come down to Houston <laughs> and beat me up. What about you, dear? I want to definitely spread awareness about ACEs, but most importantly, to explain how it impacts Black families, particularly. Unbelievable. Cindy, if people that's listening right now want to be involved and support this program, what can they do? One of the ways that they can support is to join the conversation, right? Just even doing something as simple as listening to us tonight is a start. And then if people want to go beyond that, um, they could support a reacher. There are going to be 16 reachers in 12 different states. You can pick one or you can pick them all. There's going to be a link included in the, in the chat here, but you can go to the page. You can learn a little bit more about each reacher story, and then you can make a personal donation to one of these reachers, if not all of them. What that money allows us to do is it allows us to continue to carry the conversation and then making sure that we support the reachers as they go out and do this journey. So that's one way that people can support. Fantastic. And I'll tell you what, they're telling me it's time. I want to personally thank each and every one of you, Clarence, Ornisha, and Chanel, and Anthony, and Cindy for being on here, for what you represent for what you have gone through and now you're gonna be making an impact because as I said, you know, at the last question told me exactly revealed to us what your heart is, is you wanna educate and share hope, deal hope, I'm a hope dealer, to the entire world now. We're gonna get you in front of people. And those that haven't been on the program, which Anthony's the only one that's been on, and I invite him always back, but any of you wanna come on the program and have your own hour, I would, I'd invite, and would love to hear your own personal individual story to, to be able to share with the whole world. If you want to do that, reach out to me and we'll get you on as quickly as we possibly can. Thanks for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. Cindy, thank, thank you. you for sharing this awesome first group. We got another group coming in a couple of weeks and hopefully periodically uh, throughout the next couple of months to share with all 16 of them if they wish to be able to be on the program and share to the world what you are doing what ACES Matter is doing and what is happening to each of these folks' lives and how they're impacting their own community. And that's what it's all about. Thanks so much. As we like to end every program each and every week, no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're gonna to face today or tomorrow, folks, there's always hope. Reach down and grab it and never give up. Hope is where it's at. I promise you, join us right here next week for another edition live from Houston, Texas for Breaking the Silence. God bless and have an awesome, awesome week. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for listening to Breaking the Silence with Dr. Gregory Williams. To contact Dr. Williams, dial... 832-396-6525 or email him at shatteredbythedarkness at gmail.com and don't forget to join us each Sunday night at 8 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Pacific on BBS Radio Station 1 for the next episode of Breaking the Silence.